I found that the bio department here is very unique in that not only is it a rigorous and challenging department that really pushes you as a researcher and as a student to become a much better biologist, but also in the nature of how it deals with its grad students and interacts with its grad students and how they're always there to really help you if you need the help. And I think that combination of being a challenging atmosphere but still actively trying to help their students is one of the things that sets apart the department. The Department of Biological Sciences here in Carnegie Mellon is small and we're not ubiquitous unlike other universities but in the fields that we choose to, we make sure that we're the leaders in that field. I really like the department. The people were very nice, friendly, warm and also when I interviewed with the faculty, their research sounded really interesting and uh, I thought there were several places where I could see myself uh, doing research. My decision primarily to come to Carnegie Mellon um, was um, that it offered interdisciplinary department. My background is both in math and biology. And um, Carnegie Mellon was perhaps the only school that I interviewed with that really gave me the chance to combine molecular biology with physics and math, um, which is the MRI imaging and molecular imaging that I do. Uh, one of the, the main reasons I chose Carnegie Mellon, um, it was kind of different, and one of the reasons I actually didn't want to come here to begin with turned out to be one of its greatest strengths. So most of the programs that I had applied to were neuroscience department programs only. So they would have been just a strict neuroscience program. Um, all the courses you were to take, all the, all the departmental faculty you associate with are neuroscience faculty. Um, CMU is much different. The biology department, um, they have um, biology faculty and chemistry faculty and neuroscience faculty all um, in a single, uh, single department. And so um, that's certainly a plus because there's a lot, of, um, a lot of room for collaboration. The collaboration that you can do between our department and other departments on campus and other research institutions in Pittsburgh as a whole, as well as different uh, labs and organizations outside of the city and across the globe, is an amazing advantage to students who come here. It gives you a wonderful way that you can really be ready to enter the world as a global researcher. There is a departmental orientation where it, you have an introduction to the research that's going on at CMU. And so um, I believe every um, professor who's running an active lab comes in and gives a 20 minute talk on what their research is and, and what their lab is doing and what kind of types of opportunities there are for, for you and their lab. And it also gives you a kind of sense of what the, the advisor is like. The first year in our program um, was a, a very good experience for me. I came in with a uh, couple of gaps in my background and a lot of the first year was essentially geared towards bringing everybody in the program back up to speed and getting everyone on an even setting, mostly through coursework. So the first semester um, required a, a lot of uh, core courses. We covered a lot of ground in a very short amount of time. And for me personally, it was uh, a large challenge, um, but it was a very good experience in the sense that I learned a lot of material um, sort of in a, in a very short amount of time um, and it really set the, the base for everything that I've done since then um, and I think even though it was quite intense um, it was something that I absolutely needed and I use pretty much on a daily basis in my own research now. Uh, during your first year uh, at Carnegie Mellon you will be taking uh, classes. You'll have three classes your first semester and three classes your second semester. Um, both uh, for the first semester, you'll be taking um, more of a core uh, group of classes, which includes molecular biology and cell and biochemistry, and of course, an elective of your choice. And your second semester, you'll be taking three electives, um, usually uh, several advanced classes, um, such as advanced genetics or advanced cell, um, something along those lines. We took advanced development, which was a joint class between Pitt and CMU, and that was really neat because you got to meet some of the professors from the University of Pittsburgh and also some of the students over there. And, um, and that was a really interactive class kind of discussion style where we were uh, each in charge of certain figures and papers. But I really enjoyed the classes. I learned so much. And mostly all the professors are very willing to help you. Like they really just want you to learn. And um, 
I like that. I guess I wasn't expecting that coming in. I thought, you know, it's just going to be throw the kid into the water and see if they can swim. But it really is not that type of environment at all. And I really enjoyed that. In your first year, you select three different labs which you'll rotate in. And that just basically means they give you 10 weeks in that lab in which to work on a project, complete a small project, and basically experience the lab. Both the people who work there, the techniques they typically use, so that you get some idea of what being in that lab would be like. Uh, during my first rotation, I worked with Mark Lopez here. Uh, I was interested in him, obviously, because I'm interested in structural biology. Uh, then during my second rotation I worked with Gordon Rule, who's also a structural biologist. However, instead of using x-ray crystallography, he studies uh, proteins with NMR. Um, and so I was interested in continuing the structural biology theme. And then finally, um, I decided to just go a completely different direction and try cell biology, and so I worked with Minoj. When I first got to CMU, I already knew that I really wanted to work in developmental biology. So I did rotations in the Hinman lab, the Edinson lab, and the McCartney lab. And ultimately I joined uh, Veronica Hinman's lab because I was really inter interested in combining uh, studies of evolution with development. My first rotation, I was actually in the Schwartz lab. I was working on their cancer research project. Uh, the goal of the project is you're given these data, this data of the progression of tumor cells. Uh, in different cancer patients. And what we're trying to understand is how these cells evolve throughout the duration of the tumor. And understanding that, we can then have a better idea of targeted gene therapies in the future to deal with specific types of tumors. Uh, my second rotation was in the Minden lab where I was working on, a, on their uh, deep proteomics project where we're trying to be able to visualize in the same image, in the same, especially gel images, uh, we're trying to visualize really high density protein as well as very low density protein so we can get a better idea of what's actually happening in the cell at any particular point. And for my third project, I was in the Duran lab working on phylogenetics and trying to classify different protein families that were present in the human genome. During my first year, I selected three labs to rotate in. My first rotation was in the Macbeth lab where I expressed and purified an RNA editing enzyme that I tried to crystallize to solve the structure. My second rotation was in the Linset lab, where I expressed and purified a recombinant fluorescent protein with a transmembrane domain that I then inserted into liposomes. My third rotation was here in the Lopez lab, where I did chip assays to monitor RNA polymerase II stalling across a gene that is recursively spliced. Um, my first rotation was in the Linset lab, which is a, gold, uh, excuse me, a Golgi uh, biogenesis morphology lab uh, and that was really a lot of fun and it was difficult for me because I got a result which doesn't necessarily happen in all the rotations and so I was really thrilled about it and it was hard for me to know if I really liked the lab or if I really liked getting a result. Um, anyway then I rotated in the Wolford lab which is a yeast lab and they do um, ribosome uh, assembly stuff which was really neat because they have some techniques that they've kind of hammered out and so you can most of the time you can put together something that you can get a result out of and um, you can do it in a pretty timely fashion. Yeast smell funny though, so anyway. <laughs> and then I, I did my third rotation in the Lee lab, which is the lab that I ended up joining, and um, Tina works mostly on ER morphology. Journal Club is a great forum to, uh, for students to present their research. Um, as a second year student, you present uh, an article because um, obviously you're just beginning your research. Uh, and then third through fifth years present their research. And so it's a great, great way for students to get feedback from faculty that they wouldn't normally be getting feedback from. Um, you present your research uh, for 20 minutes and then you take about five minutes of questions. In your second year, it's really that's really when you're getting established. What project are you going to work on? Many people carry on with their rotation project, but some people branch out into something completely different. And um, the second year is all about learning what you're doing and be getting a clear idea of what that's going to be. This culminates in giving your thesis proposal, which is a written document and a presentation 
reviewed by your committee that basically is where you will display what you know, what your plans are, and you've mapped out your plans for the rest of your PhD. After this proposal is won, it sort of becomes a little more interesting because you now know this is what you're going to do. And uh, you no longer are worried, um, am I a scientist? You know you are a scientist now. It's, and now it's going to be more about what uh, the type of experiments that I want to design to answer these questions. Uh, I have always felt that if I have a problem or an issue here in the department, there's always someone I can talk to. I feel like there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people that are willing to, uh, to listen to you and really try to, try to help you, whether that be in the graduate programs office with Ina and Emily, who are always there to lend a hand, or if it's with your own advisor. I've, I feel that many of advisors here are very approachable and I know I could go to my advisor with anything and she would help me out with it. And importantly, I felt that the advising um, is rather flexible. So there's been a number of times throughout my career that um, I've wanted to do a particular thing that maybe is a little bit non-standard and the feedback from my various levels of advisors isn't, you know, that's non-standard, that's not what we do. Um, it's more along the lines of, okay, you know, how do we make that happen? Let's, you know, really kind of work the resources at our disposal um, and see how we can tailor this program to your goals as a scientist um, and for your career. It's a department-wide retreat where all the graduate students and faculty attend, and I think that's a great chance to, to meet um, all the other graduate students in the department, I think it's really the first chance to get to meet all the other graduate students and um, other people in the labs who aren't necessarily the heads of the lab. And so it's a great chance to, to find out what everybody is doing in the university research-wise, but also to get to know um, all the people here.